हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू वीडियो मेकिंग वी हैव फन ओवर हियर so the last time we uh, we were looking at reverbs and we had made a tier list of reverbs if you want to go check that out you can just go check that out it's there on our youtube channel and um, can we put something nay today we're going to be doing the same thing with compressors and this time it is a lot of compressors i think there's maybe 15 to 16 compressors that we're about to yeah. review so how are you feeling joel I feel nervous. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why nervous? <laughs> it's compressors. But I think it's because uh, I usually uh, have used most of these compressors but uh, hmm. most of the time it is like an instinct that every audio yeah. engineer has yeah. that they would uh, go for a specific compressor. Compressor. I know. And uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work obviously, but hmm. there's like at least three compressors in one's mind before uh, treating something something but anyway let's let's, uh, let's get started let's um, dive deep into this yes the first Good. one is prosy and uh, no question i'm just <laughs> <laughs> yeah i feel uh, prosy is very versatile very clean yeah. very uh, you have these modes which are very useful yeah. like i can put so before i start my processing there is always a c2 uh, there's always a Q3 and a C2, C2. going yeah. simultaneously just to tame everything and yeah. then comes all the fancy things yeah and then and and it's the same thing when i do on my submix or my uh, yeah. bus processing also there's yeah. always a C2, C2. on like yeah. because it's so versatile with your attacks and release, and release and the threshold and yeah. yeah and you can monitor how how much you're compressing how much you're not compressing Absolutely. So it's very uh, user friendly and um, extremely yeah yeah i i am in love with pro c2 and one other thing is uh, other than all of that i use it very similarly just as you i use it almost everywhere um because if uh, i feel like i use the compressor for first i use the compressor first just to kind of control the dynamic range and maybe control the transients of whatever it is i'm compressing then later on if i want to look at tone shaping mm. then i i worry about that separately okay. yes, yes i i try not to mix yeah, the two both together yeah yeah hmm. i think legendary legendary <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, i already put it there okay, okay. the pro tools dynamic 3 <laughs> compressed <laughs> to be fair i used to work a lot on this because yeah. i never had yeah, any other any compressor, other compressor. <laughs> <laughs> so i was forced to work on this i think the most annoying thing is to see the the red dot the red dot moving and i used to wonder what is happening why is that red dot moving so much <laughs> Oh, and then uh, oh, I used to mess around and stuff but uh, yeah i pretty much like this it's an okay compressor hmm. i've tried my level best to uh, work with it but after a point i couldn't like if i if i had a mix today hmm. and if i had to use this compressor i pretty much know that this is not going to work hmm. for me because i would be tweaking this for hours and hours and then wouldn't hmm. get the result that i want yeah uh the compressor that i used to work with when i first like started learning how to mix i i remember i installed pro tools and i didn't have this i had the channel strip oh yeah, the, yeah, yeah that yeah, that yeah. blue color channel one, strip yeah. that had both the eq, EQ. and the compressor correct, below correct, so correct. i started off with that and the thing is at least with this this still has a graph yeah i don't that doesn't have a graph so even while i was like moving stuff around like yeah. messing messing around with different parameters i couldn't hear shit mm. and i had no clue what was going <laughs> on i'm like ha mai ye hai to mai karne wala hu <laughs> but yeah this helps you hear for compression Yeah. So and I think once you get used to the graph also I it kind of helps you understand yeah how what exactly is going on. So majorly I've this also has a key input. So you side chain it also. Side chain with, with this. this also. It's I, an okay it's, it's okay. It's for okay. A, for I, a stock plugin it's really good. Yeah, that's like, true. If you want to if you have pro tools and you want a mix to be done yeah you, you have a you have this so yeah. you don't you don't really have to go ahead and be like oh shit i don't have anything yeah. i can't mix exactly at least it's there it's yeah. okay it's fine it's okay yeah. it's it's, yeah, it's yeah. great to use agreed okay now we have the ssl comp that's the g bus compressor 
Okay, so uh, in this this compressor, I feel like there's there are two versions. I feel one is uh, the UAD one and one is uh, the waves. The one. waves one. This is a picture of the waves. One. Yeah, yeah, this one oh. is the waves one. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, one thing I really dislike is the uh, analog thing. I think it has an on off for analog. Uh yeah, it does. It does. Yeah, it, it has a switch. Yeah, to switch on the analog. I don't yeah. know why. <laughs> Uh, I I just switch it off every time, <laughs> and it always has a, a makeup gain that is always it's, oh it's, it's it yeah, it's yeah more than it's zero. always always pushed it's, it's always pushed so yeah. whenever you put it it's gonna be louder it's gonna be like exciting and you think like oh wait this sounds <laughs> banging but when you hear it outside it's like yeah that's true I think if you bring it back down to zero and then you kind of like bypass it yeah. and then unbypass it then you kind of hear the difference yeah. I feel this adds a lot lot of uh, low mids or low end hmm. to your track. Hmm. So majorly it's used on your bus compression. Yeah. Like a se- uh, like a vocal bus compression or like a sub mix or something like that. Hmm. And it makes Maybe it even, more even drum bus. Yeah, yeah, and it makes it makes the low end more thumpy and more uh, it's out there. Very much tighter. Yeah. Also. But uh, so one thing I've noticed is I I mean I could be hearing it wrong, but I think when you turn on that analog button, right? Hmm. So I think it kind of boosts the high highs Probably. a little bit, the high mids and highs. Probably l- like maybe somewhere like above three four k. I I, I feel like it just puts the analog hiss. I'm it does not. put the analog hiss, yeah. but I I I think one thing I've noticed is that it kind of like pushes the brightness a little bit. Okay. I I I really like it. it I think it's a great compressor. Yeah. It, you don't really hear the compression too harshly, but it still does a great job. Yeah. It. True. it yeah, so I think, do we want to, where do we want to put this? I would put it in okay. You would put it in okay? Yeah. All right, sure. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Okay. The next we have the DBX 160. 160. Yeah. It's a uh, legendary uh, bus compressor. Hmm. So the hardware is used mainly on bigger, uh, mm-hmm. like, rock records and stuff like that. Yeah. For compressing the drum bus together to making it tighter mm-hmm. and uh, it works well for them but and it sounds way better but it never worked for me I have tried this many times what it does is basically it adds a specific mid-range to it it does so it I yeah. really haven't cracked that mm-hmm. where have I where should I use that, use that mid-range yeah. Yeah. so whenever I've used it it does not work for me because mm. I don't know it's just mm. I, I usually I've, I've usually found myself using this more in parallel Mm. Uh, because it's so aggressive, it it's quite an aggressive compressor. Yeah, I found that it really like it, it can really squash. Yeah, uh, your signal. So I found myself parallelly <coughs> compressing like my vocals, my bass, uh, my drums with this sometimes, mm. mm-hmm. not all the time. Mm. Sometimes, yeah. But I I think it's okay. It's yeah. um I'm I'm okay with it. It's, yeah. it's, it's not like I'm it's crazy okay. about yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Exactly. Okay. C1 comp by waves. I would put this straight up poop. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I can I I never understood this plugin. I mean the Dynamic 3 and uh, it's, it's similar. A, it's similar sort of. Uh it's in the same ballpark, mm. but uh, I feel Dynamic is much more easier to understand hmm. and, um, and C1 comp you can actually so aggressively hear it compressing you can so let's say if you're compressing a vocal Yeah then you can really hear the consonants sticking out sticking almost. out a yeah. lot and it's you have, i feel like you have to be very careful with this first time i ever used this was in my first job and um, the that's why you were fired <laughs> <laughs> my boss had a specific set of uh, plugins that he had purchased yeah. and c1 comp was one of them and i tried using it there um and you quit <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I I never really liked it personally, eh. and also the job. <laughs> we'll cut that out. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, okay, next one. JST Joey Sturgis Stones. Yeah, I know you are a huge fan of this. <laughs> I I used I used um, to be very judgmental about it, but the more I started using it, the more I started understanding it. So we agree to keep it on poop. Hey, <laughs> screw you. I'm going to... Okay, see, say, I'm assuming you haven't used this. No, I haven't used this. But I've seen, um, like, uh, you use it. Hmm. And it sounds great. Yeah. I've seen Ronak use it. it sounds, yeah, it great. sounds great. 
even even I sort of sort of yeah. used to use it a lot the way they use it i feel that is more important more important so th- this is great for very punchy um tones so especially on if you want to get like metal drums mm-hmm. i've seen that this is used a lot if you want to get like extremely in your oh. face vocals yeah, yeah yeah then you use this and yeah the i found myself using it a lot more often now. it has different uh, compressors for different different things, thing right? yeah it's called this like gst drums gst bass gst vocals and uh, stuff like that yeah okay and it has different modes in it also yes 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 uh, yeah it it's depends. it's a very aggressive compressor right extremely extremely mm, but it works well on like transients yeah. and yeah. like squashing something yeah actually like if you if you kind of put it on the some you know some of the lighter settings okay Uh, it it still sounds a little aggressive but it's not as crazy as you would think the you know when you start like you you can literally see in the names there's mm-hmm. like blend bouncy uh, and then stuff like that and then you you can really get to squashed also and then that is where you yeah. <laughs> the compressor <laughs> okay where do you want to put this uh, i'll put it for great i love it i'm oh great interesting I mean if if you're if you're not going to put too much input into it I'll just put it for leg- legendary. Oh really? Yeah. I okay we'll keep it on legendary. Legendary. I love it cuz I I okay. I, I freaking I, love fair it. enough I have not used it so <laughs> I I'm, I'm yeah. open for. Yeah. Okay. So the next one we have is the UAD Fairchild 670. Yeah. Yes. No yes. you've definitely used this more this. than I. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of this. I feel this is very close to something um like 76 like okay mm-hmm. how you would uh, approach you know compression compression for 76 is the same thing down this one okay so i feel this is legendary okay yeah go for it i have not used it i I've, i've used other uh, fair child ones mm-hmm. i didn't realize we had a uad one as well i've i've been using the the uh, the stock one that's there with pro tools which i which i actually personally really like is it waves or is it stock there, really there's sure. both we have oh, both we have both we have both so there's so a I've stock one i've used a wave one, one waves yeah. one but i never liked that like one. that yeah. i i i see i seem to really i like both the stock one and the waves one also mm. i need to now that i know we have uad which i should use it more often yeah <laughs> sounds okay. great next one yeah api 2500 <laughs> waves I would straight up put it in bad. Really? Yeah. Oh, why? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like uh, you you don't have much control in it. Oh. Uh, much control in in terms like if I for example want a ratio between 2 and 4, I don't have a 3 or I don't have a 2.5. It has like those knobs where it's 2 and 4 and 8. Mhm. Mm-hmm. So it has I also mm-hmm. the threshold Mm-hmm. it's like um dials instead of like the smooth uh input so you do, mm. you can't no no it's smooth you can go in you between can go you in can go in between I, th- i think the only attack and stuff like that you can't mm. really so attack uh attack i think is uh, fixed values yeah, fixed values uh, release uh release you can get actually quite surgical with it so there's two knobs for yeah, release yeah two knobs yeah so one is the fixed values and then if you want to get in between then there's another knob another knob yeah 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 and then there is like uh, this tone feature which uh, no the which an- really... the analog feature no 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 no, no 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 the analog f- analog is always switched off for me i don't know why <laughs> i just i just hate that his sound oh right the tone the, the tone. tone yeah so yeah there yeah. is this the, high the three switches yeah, yeah. three switches mm-hmm. so i like that one mm-hmm. but i don't know like it never worked for me i've used this for side chaining and stuff because it has an input Huh. but i yeah, haven't yeah, yeah. really used it um too much no. i i use this a lot especially on drums it works really great on drum buses it really glues everything together okay where so, do you want to put it uh let's put it on okay i mean let's let's call it a compromise okay yeah <clears throat> But but I really like this. So the thing is that this doesn't sound very aggressive unless you make it sound aggressive. Mm-hmm. Like even if you're going like let's say some three to five dB of compression, it doesn't sound as aggressive as some other compressors might. Okay. And um, but it works great on drums. Drums sound really nice and tight. Uh, mm-hmm. with this, everything starts coming together really nicely with that. Yeah. Which I really like. Nice. Okay, next one. I I feel like this is one of your faves. Yeah. So. we have the waves wave cla 76 76 so we have the black one and the blue one uh, it's the it's the one. same thing 
It's the same thing. There's a bluey and there's a blacky. In no, sync. but uh, as soon as you switch it, there's a difference. Yeah, yeah, there's a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I meant. Oh, okay. Huh. Yeah. So for rap vocals, high, high attack, high release, hmm. like fast attack, fast, fast release, release. Uh, and blue works the best for me. Mm-hmm. And obviously, you dial it according to how much attack you attack want. Attack you want. Right. But that's a good starting point. Hmm. And um, for something like uh, like a more mid rangey. Compressed oh, uh, high, thing. High, highs and yeah, mid-range, yeah. I would use the black one. Yeah. Because it's very aggressive. Mm-hmm. And I think we have also done a good comparison of 76. Yeah. You did that. Okay, I you think can, you compared it with our warm audio yeah. 76. Okay. Yeah. So you can, you guys can check that check out that also. Out. Yeah. And um, it sounds great. So when I was testing this out, it actually, there was a huge difference between right. the analog gear and mm, this one. This one yeah. But the analog gear always works the best. <laughs> It of has course. it has that warm, yeah, saturated harmonic, tone. Yeah, yeah, it has that it color does. that it adds. It does, it does for yeah, sure. Yeah, it it works the best. Yeah, the UAD one also works really good. Mm-hmm. I'm a huge fan of the UAD plugin. Yeah, if not, then this works. This one, yeah, yeah the Waves seventy six yeah. works the best. Yeah, so I, I would put it on great. I so I agree with you. I think it goes on great too. Uh, the th- the thing the thing I love most about this is that this works really well while I'm recording, especially like even mm-hmm. you use it while you're recording. Correct. It doesn't it doesn't take up any processing power too much processing yeah. power that it it might cause latency mm. at least here in our systems. And I find myself using this a lot on rap vocals as well. Yeah. And also, you know, in a drum recording, if, like a snare drum, mm-hmm. I'll probably use this. I'll keep an extremely slow attack. Mm. Like I won't make it really fast. Uh, but the release will be really fast and you know I'm just letting that transient through and I'm just like squashing the hell yeah, out of it yeah, yeah, yeah. so I found myself doing that I have I found myself um, parallelly compressing yeah with this parallel as well. compression with this is with this is really good. good it's too good it's too good yeah it is very nice and um, yeah vocals pay also I've, so if I were to use this on vocals I feel like I would use a series of compressors mm. so starting off with the 76 just to kind of control the peaks mm. and then I would probably use another um, 2A or 3A compressor just to they even it out even more something right. like that right but yeah I love this I think it's great I think this is a good um, it has attack and release rather mm. than uh, just an input and an output, an input that's there yeah. in an LA 2A style yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I really prefer this over the LA two A mm-hmm, few mm-hmm. scenarios. Yeah, LA two A yeah. sometimes I use it when I don't want to think too much about. Yeah, I f- so it has mm-hmm. fixed attack and fixed release. It, it, it's, it's 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 uh it's varying. So if it if you compress more, then it releases faster till you reach correct, zero. Correct, yeah. correct. That's yeah. That's how it works. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so the T Rex bus compressor. What do you think? I feel this is legendary. Oh shit! Really? Why you know? Uh-huh. Because, um, so I have instances where um, clients are like, you know, the mix is not there yet or it's <laughs> not uh, banging, enough, banging or enough or it's not together enough. Just put this on the master bus. Uh-huh. Uh, so even if you want to go more aggressive, you there's can. this grit mode that yeah, you switch yeah, it on yeah, 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 yeah. and you have that mid range popping out. Right. The high mids or the mids, I'm not really sure, mm-hmm. uh, but it you can actually hear it. it's yeah, very audible it, very it, it audible. Is, it is quite audible and um, it also has this uh, it has an L, LR like hmm. left and the right left and the right and yeah. it also has a mid side so you yeah. can compress your side separately yeah. also, or mid, mid separately, separately. Yeah. so I think it, this is one of the great plugins that mm-hmm. T-Rex have made and I use mm-hmm. it in every in most of my like I would say around 80% of my mixes this compressor is always there oh damn yeah Wow. So I I haven't cracked this plugin all the way yet. I, I sometimes it really works. I really like how it sounds. But I feel like I'm still trying to find the right scenarios where I can where I'm like, okay, no, this compressor will work really well. It works well when um, you have like a slamming eight oh eight or a kick in your face, like Okay. Uh r- I'll probably mm-hmm. I've used this on rap records because I've done a lot of rap records. Mm-hmm. So I've used this one. It works very well. So mm-hmm. I have this chain where it fits, fits really, really well. well. And then mm-hmm. I have to just tweak it around to make it sure that it... Yeah. Either I want the grit or I don't want the yeah. grit or like those things. Yeah. yeah but yeah, this yeah. works very versatile. Like even a dB of compression and 
it sounds so much together so much like in your face damn and come clients are happy i'm happy <laughs> <laughs> tr5 is happy <laughs> <laughs> i would put nice. on legendary nice yeah yeah no, sure go ahead i i really like it as well i think yeah legendary is fine hmm. okay okay next one the r compressor or renaissance compressor yeah. do you like this compressor i used to i would use this a lot like almost on everything i would use this kind of similar to prosi mm-hmm. like i had prosi <laughs> as well like when i was just working by myself uh i but i would use the r compressor quite a bit um mm. because i was really fascinated by um how it worked and how it sounded back then mm. but i feel like well, now that i found uh, like now that i've gotten more used to prosi Um, amongst other compressors i i really like how smooth they actually sound yeah. you know it's like they really help like let's say if you really want to bring something like very like reduce the dynamic range considerably but not make it sound too squashed mm. i feel like those are great while with our compressor it really just slams down yeah, on yeah, yeah. whatever it is you want to compress so with our comp i've seen uh sort of use it first Mm. and i was really fascinated by yeah. uh how it sounds how mm. he makes it sound mm. because the way he uses the attack and the release and um the ratio yeah it's it sounds well if you know exactly you where to use, use it use it yeah so and how to use yeah, it yeah so um this is a really good plugin but you should just know where to use it use that's it. that's yeah. the only thing mm. it has a smooth function and an electro mm. sound yeah. Yeah, so yeah. electro and opto, yeah, and then yeah. So you switch between different modes. Modes sounds really good. It's a very aggressive compressor, but it is, it is, yeah. it's very aggressive. I think we can put this in okay. Yeah, it's an okay plug. It's an okay plug. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Okay, V comp. This is okay. this is your turn. So, <laughs> so I've used this plugin, not a lot, but I've used it enough hmm. to know that there are better plugins out there. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. Like I've used it enough huh. to mess around to yeah. uh, to see what this plugin can do and stuff. And yeah. it is a legendary. It's a replica of a legendary plugin. Hmm. So, I mean, you you can use this and make the sound make it sound better. Yeah. But uh, for me, when I use this, I always went to a different compressor to uh, find better results. Better results. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this has but cool feature of this. Uh, plugin or the compressor mm-hmm. is that it has a dsr built in it ah okay so, okay okay it's so cool nice, because nice. because see if you if tomorrow i have to make a plugin mm. or uh, or a compressor yeah i would also put a dsr in it why because as soon as you're going to compress something the s's are going to stick out the, yeah, more most the probably, consonants yeah. are going to st- uh, stick, stick out. out yeah everything is going to so a dsr would actually help, help in that in that so scenario, this yeah. this is like a genius plugin Mm-hmm. but um, there there are other there are other, other compressors out there so just like i think does the ssl channel strip also have a dsr in it or is it just so channel EQ? strip also has like um, eq and eq compressors. and compress it's not technically a compressor this is proper compressor compressor, compressor. with a dsr this also right? has like a limit fun- function so huh. it acts like a limiter too in ah. some so if you feel like your vocalist has sung something that's too dynamic mm-hmm. i would just put it on limit mode, limit mode. and just yeah, control yeah, it yeah, in yeah, more yeah 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 that makes sense it's it's really it's really versatile you like i would suggest i would recommend everyone to use this compressor mm-hmm. but um, if you have like c2 or something like a fair child yeah. i mean it's going to be yeah. way better than this that's one. true that's true but yeah. anyway vcom what do you want to put it i've not really used this so it's up to you i would put it in okay like it's okay. it's uh, all right it's all right yeah it's not it's it is special it, but not it's not mind blowing mind blowing yeah okay cool the slate digital vbc rack i am i love this i i really really like this i have used it multiple times hmm. but i'm straight off going to put it in bad because i suck at using <laughs> this <laughs> yeah And oh man So but I'll tell you though uh I've used these individually they also come individually mm. um but I use it in very specific scenarios so I'll just start from top to bottom yeah so there's the FG gray that comes first 
So the FG Grey, the moment you put it on the track, regardless of whether you're compressing or not, it's going to completely change the tone, the tone of that yeah. uh, of that audio track. Like let's say if you put it on a vocal, your mids are like suddenly pop just popping out. Your low mids are more right, and um, high yeah. highs it doesn't really do much. Just yeah. just mainly your low mids and mids. It just seems to bring out yeah. extremely like it feels like somebody's put an EQ. Over yeah, there. yeah. Yeah, but as compressors, I feel like um, it has this drive knob also that you can. Uh, that's on the red. That's on that's the FG on the red. red. Yeah, oh. FG red is not as aggressive. Okay. Uh, but the FG gray definitely like there's no there's no drive knob. It just drives it whenever you put it on. But the way that these compressors react, I feel like they're more to control like very sudden peaks. Uh. I um. I found I found myself using these to control sudden peaks as compared to maybe mm-hmm. gluing them gluing something together like let's say if I had some uh, kick or snare in a, a song that's like really popping out mm-hmm. then I'll just put this on mm. uh, the I'll put the FG uh, red bus compressor on the stereo compressor and I'll it I just set it in a way where it just catches the peaks mm-hmm. but somehow it still doesn't sound aggressive. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I'll, the gray is aggressive. Even the compression, you can really hear it. Mm-hmm. The the red, the FG red stereo one, mm. um, you can hear it, but it's, let's say, it's it's nothing compared to your R compressor. Mm-hmm. If, like R compressor it, and it, C1 it. comp, you can just like really hear the ducking. Mm-hmm. It's not that apparent with this. Okay. And again, the, the MU mastering deck, love it. I... It, I think it sounds great. It's like one rack filled one with three filled with things. Filled yeah, with three it's, compressors. It's, it's kind of like this. Yeah. And like what we have in front of us but in a plug-in form. Yeah. Okay. And we um, come to the... So you want to keep it at bad only? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. I yes. need it. I'm going to put it at great. <laughs> for me. What? <laughs> it's biased. <laughs> yes, it's just being biased. Okay. So we have... Two Finally, UAD 1176 11 mm-hmm. One is the white, one is the black. It's the So that's the SE mm-hmm. and the one on the right is LN. LN, yeah. okay. Hmm. So, hmm. what do you think? I have the hardware with me. I'm happy with the black hardware. <laughs> 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 it sounds great. I mean, hmm. before we started, I was just having uh, a discussion with Ajay and... Uh, we wanted to see what exactly the white and the black Light. does. So yeah. we ran few tests and you want to say what <laughs> what you found? So apparently the what what I understood was that the the LN, the black one, was actually reacting rather more aggressively. So they, they both were at the same settings, by the way. And the black one was reacting much more uh, aggressively to mm. the... Um, to the audio and it was compressing a lot more as compared to the white one. Yeah, you could hear the, the compression on the black, black one, one as more. compared to the white one. White one. Same settings, everything same. Same, yeah. And um, yeah, well, it, it well, also matters how much you're in, uh, sending the level inside, inside. the compressor. Yeah. So I, I yeah. have a feeling that if we sent more input into the SE one, that it would probably we would probably hear yeah, it more yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah, but majorly like people uh, or engineers they use. Uh, the black for specific things yeah. because it's gonna react in a specific, specific way, way and the white specifically for something, something else, else that they don't want it to be too aggressive, aggressive. yeah that's true yeah. I, I will say though I think I'm more used to how the LN uh, version reacts okay. I, I am still to use the SE a little more mm-hmm. but generally just UAD 1176 compressors I mean it's yeah, UAD it's it's universal audio and it's an ele- it's authentic 1176 plugins. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't really get much better much than better. that. Yeah. I, I would say, Very I would wonderful. say legendary, bro. So I would put the black in, in legendary, legendary and, and, the, the, and the white one in great. Great, yeah. Ah, fair enough. Because you can get uh, away with using the black black one on yeah. most of the things yeah that's true like obviously if you dial down the input and hmm. then you have somewhat uh, yeah. the white one yeah 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 but that's uh, true. yeah hmm. look at look at look at c1 just, <laughs> just sitting down there <laughs> all alone <laughs> yeah you feel bad no we don't feel bad for you 
<laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that we don't have one bad what, one bad plug in it's it it couldn't even reach till bad, bad. bro <laughs> oh my god i just put it in bad so yeah, it does not feel that bad bad <laughs> see it's so bad <laughs> <laughs> okay so cool. Thank you guys for watching and uh, we'll wrap this round over here and keep watching us yeah, not weirdly just watch our videos and our content okay bye okay bye i hope you had fun nahi <laughs> <laughs>